Welcome to Downtown Sports. My name is Downtown Stephen Brown, and in today's video, guys, let's go over the last couple of Toronto Maple Leaf games and get to the news that broke yesterday. Looking over the home opener against the Washington Capitals, it was a very tough first period for Ilya Samsonov. He let in two goals that he would probably have liked to have had back because looking over the numbers in all situations, the Maple Leafs really controlled the majority of that game, and it did not deserve to be as close as it was, as they controlled the majority of the scoring opportunities, 37-27, to 27, and the high-danger shot attempts, 19-7. to 7. And you have to give credit to the Maple Leafs' power play in this one. They were dominant all throughout the game. They struck early on the John Tavares goal. They went 1-3 for three overall, but really, if you watch the Maple Leafs on the power play in that game against the Capitals, uh, they could have had goals on all three power plays very easily. They moved the puck very effectively, and they looked dangerous all night long. Like we said earlier, Ilya Samsonov allowed two kind of stinker goals in that first period, but I thought he really bounced back in the second, and especially in that third, against his former team in the Washington Capitals, and I felt like he really gave the Maple Leafs an opportunity to win that game. And most often than not, that's going to be enough. If the Maple Leafs get that kind of quality of goaltending, uh, whether it's Samsonov in net or Murray or somebody else, they're going to win a lot of games. Remember, this was a team that finished with 115 points, set a franchise record, and finished fourth in the NHL with a near bottom of the league goaltending last season. I pointed it out in my season preview video where I went over all of the Maple Leafs forward lines. This line of Zach Aston Reese, David Kampf, and Nico Bay Kubel, I just, I don't like it. Every single shutdown line last season involving David Kampf that featured Pierre Engvall was absolutely dominant for the Toronto Maple Leafs last year, and every single shutdown line that featured David Kampf that did not have Pierre Engvall on it was just not very good by the numbers. They haven't played very well in any of the games so far by the numbers. I like the individual players on that line and the identity they're trying to create, but I think it needs a bit of a shakeup. Now, these other guys didn't play very well in that game against the Montreal Canadiens either, but the game against the Washington Capitals was a bit of a bounce-back game for the defensive pairing of Jake Muzzin and Justin Hall. And I know I sort of kind of made it sound like I was picking on just Justin Hall, maybe in the previous video when I was talking about this D pairing, uh, but I'm not. I'm talking about Jake Muzzin as well. I'm talking about the duo as a pairing. The individual players, like I said in my season preview video when going over all the Maple Leafs defensive pairings, these, these are two players who played drastically better when they were apart from each other last season, um, but they were able to come together and have a pretty good game against the Washington Capitals, so I guess that deserves a thumbs up. I'm going to start a new segment this year, and it's called My List, and this is not a positive thing. You don't want to be on my list, and the first player to go on my list so far this year is Morgan Riley. The Maple Leafs have allowed seven goals so far this year at 5-on-5, five five, and Morgan Riley's been on the ice for six of them. And defense has never really been Morgan's thing, and I accept him for that. I accept him for who he is. He's one of my favorite players on the team. And not all of the goals that he's been on the ice for have been his fault. He's been on the ice for some real stinkers. But that still doesn't excuse his effort there. That doesn't excuse just the mental lapses that he has at times. Uh, he's got to clean up what's going on there. Overall, I thought it was a pretty good game. The Maple Leafs outshot the Capitals 39-26. to which means Samsonov had a save percentage of 929. They outhit them 37 to 33, and Austin Matthews got his first goal of the year. Now, early on Saturday, Matt Murray did leave practice, and it put people into an absolute frenzy because it looked like he was coming up lame on one side. It looked like he had pulled something, and later on in the day, the Maple Leafs announced that he would be on long term injured reserve for a minimum of four weeks with uh, some type of groin injury. And because the Maple Leafs placed him on long-term injured reserve, that means he has to miss the team's next 10 games and 24 days on the NHL calendar, which means the earliest he'll be eligible to come back is the second week of November. Now, this does tie into another conversation that we've already had here on the channel, and that's before the Maple Leafs placed Matt Murray on LTIR, they did not have enough cap space to activate Timothy Lilligren uh, off of LTIR when he returns from his injury around the end of October. But if you think about it, even with Murray on LTIR, they still don't have enough cap space to really activate Timothy Lilligren, because if he comes back the last week of October and Murray comes back the second week of November, they've bought themselves a couple of extra weeks, but they haven't really opened up any cap space in the long term. 
which would lead you to believe that a trade is coming. But at the same time, like I've said uh, about a dozen times now, they did this last year with Ilya Mikheyev on LTIR to start the year. Peter Morazic got hurt. Mitch Marner got hurt. Morazic got hurt again. Then Muzzin got hurt. And they were able to just keep kicking this can down the road um, until the trade deadline when they eventually traded Travis Dermott away. That's not really a solution to the cap space problem that they currently have. But if the problem is going to kind of solve itself that way because injuries are going to happen, um, I guess that means the Maple Leafs don't have to lose anybody off of their roster. And that's a bonus, which means if they have time, they should use it. And that's more than likely what they're going to do. But in the meantime, because Matt Murray is on LTIR, the Maple Leafs have afforded themselves a little bit of short-term flexibility. So I would expect Nick Robertson, just like uh, Elliot Freeman tweeted out, to be recalled from the American Hockey League. Maybe even a couple of other players. So the Maple Leafs can have some bench players and not have to worry about playing short if there are shorter-term injuries, like guys that are day-to-day -day or that are just missing a couple of games. But that's only the salary cap component of Matt Murray being hurt for the next four weeks. That means the goaltending tandem for the Toronto Maple Leafs is going to be Ilya Samsonov and Eric Schalgren. And Eric Schalgren started his career with a shutout against the Dallas Stars, but if you take that game out, uh, the 876 save percentage in uh, the next 12 games, not very good. And that's not even mentioning Matt Murray, just the person who, I mean, he plays in Wednesday season opener against the Montreal Canadiens. He gets beat three times on his glove hand, and that's sort of been the book on him throughout his career. The Leafs don't play very well in front of him. They lose that game. And if you're looking at his numbers from last season, he was good when he was healthy, but he wasn't healthy very often. And that's been the story over the last three or four years. So you got to put an asterisk on these numbers. But we knew that going into the trade. We knew that when the rumors first started to swirl, uh, this was always going to be part of the gamble, always part of the risk. I was okay with the Maple Leafs acquiring Matt Murray this summer. I was okay with them taking that gamble uh, because I assumed that uh, the Senators would either be buying him out or the Maple Leafs would be getting him at 75% of his cap hit. So for like $2.3 million instead of the $4.6 million uh, that they ended up taking on. And it's unfortunate because this is a guy that you really want to root for. This is a guy that you really want to get behind. This is someone who you really want to see succeed. But his contract makes it very difficult to do that. And that's not on him. That's on the guy who acquired him. And that's not me trying to open up a can of worms to go through all the other goalies who were available this summer. I'm just talking about the situation that they're in right now. And for him to be hurt, if he's going to be hurt, healthy, hurt, healthy, hurt, healthy, it's going to be very difficult for the Maple Leafs to navigate around that $4.6 million number. But on to last night's game against the Ottawa Senators, and I thought this was a great game. It was entertaining. It was back and forth. It was the Battle of Ontario. It was just a lot of fun. It was a great game, and the Leafs won 3-2. And it was a great game for a lot of reasons. One, Ilya Samsonov, the two goals that he allowed, one was a very, very nice shot by Shane Pinto on the power play, and the other was a crash and bang goal in front of the net where there were four Maple Leafs standing in the crease. So I don't really know what you want him to do on that one. Overall, I thought he was great. Again, he gave them a chance to win. The Maple Leafs do control the majority of the shot attempts, the actual shots, the scoring opportunities, and the expected goals in this game against the Senators at 5-on-5. Five five. Um, they had a very good first period, and their second and their third weren't as good, but they were able to pot a couple of goals on Anton Forsberg and come out with the win. I said this in a video a couple of months ago, but I said if Ilya Samsonov started the season playing well, that it would be very difficult to temper expectations. And I know, I'm aware that it's just been two games, but because he's so young, a former first round pick, he has all of the potential in the world. Um, if he continues to play the way that he's playing, um, him and the Toronto Maple Leafs can have a lot of success. And he is signed to a one-year contract, but Beyond this season, he's going to be an RFA. The Maple Leafs have his rights for next year as well. This could be a long-term solution if he continues to play the way that he's currently playing. I don't know how I feel about this one because Matthews had six hits in this game. He also had a pretty big shot block. I think he had a pretty big hit against someone on the Capitals on Thursday night as well. Um, if he gets hurt doing these kinds of things, you know, that's 
these aren't the things that you're paying Austin Matthews to do, but hey, I like the attitude. I like the initiative. If he's going to inspire other guys on the team uh, to start playing this way, like William Nylander had a really big back check in this game where he broke up a scoring opportunity. Um, it, hey, this could be an infectious attitude that helps the Maple Leafs take a step this year. But also, Austin, don't get hurt doing this stuff. Just to check in on the point leaders through three games, because John DeVere says a very quiet four points in three games so far. And if you watch the season preview video that I did, I talked about him being a very good bounce back candidate this year. And I mean, uh, for a guy who spent his entire previous offseason recovering from a neck injury and then coming into the season sort of a step behind, um, it was kind of a no brainer to pick him as a guy who could have a bounce back year. He still had 76 points in 79 games, but um, I think he could do better than that. We think that he could do better than that. And um, I think he's going to this year. But that's going to be it for the video, guys. Make sure to like it if you did like it and subscribe for more because more is always on the way. And I apologize for my voice in this one and in the previous video as well. If there was any tactical difficulties with that one, uh, that wasn't on me. That was on YouTube with a processing glitch. Um, if you noticed it, I'm sorry. If you didn't, never mind. Um, but I have been a little bit under the weather. I did test positive the other day, so I've been kind of going back and forth with that. But I felt good enough to make a video today. Um, so I'm sorry if my voice was a little bit here and there in this one, but, um, I was excited, you know, the Leafs won, so I figured, why not? Let's at least try to make a video. But like I said, that's gonna be it for this one. Make sure to like if you did like it, subscribe for more because more is always on the way, and I'll see you in the next one.